Hi guys, this is Wraith, and I've got another recommendation for you while you're waiting for the next podcast episode of Dragon's Reign to resume, which will be posted on February 25th, 2021. I have over a dozen audiobooks on Amazon. For these, I hired real professional voice actors. Their voices are sultry, sexy, and dramatic. And unlike myself, they don't laugh, have trains going in the background, or mewing by their cat. Nor did they drink Diet Coke in the middle of reading, like I tend to do. I've posted several links to my audiobooks in the description below, and here's a sample of what you can expect from my series, The Vampires Club. The young man had dark blonde hair, shaved on the back and sides, but long in the front. That hair hung down in front of his face, but it couldn't completely hide the beauty there. He was tugging on a lip ring while he spoke on his cell phone, completely oblivious to the fact that he had done the impossible. He's not a guest. I don't know who he is, Lizzie reported, her voice rising in concern. He's never even passed by the club, and there's no indication that any one of the spells misfired when he entered. They're acting like he belongs here. I mean, Leo claimed no one entered the club after Lady Harlow. Colette's voice was clipped angry at this inexplicable failure of her two security officers. Constantine cursed himself. He and Lizzie had seen the young man's odd behavior outside of the club. They should have contacted security themselves. But Marius had distracted them both from other sources of danger. Colette, Daryl, stop him from going any farther. I would speak to him myself, Constantine commanded. In his alarm... He had shifted in his seat again, and pain rippled through his body like a stone tossed into a still pond. He closed his eyes to try to banish it. He needed to be clear. He needed to be focused. We'll do, Colette said. Let's be casual, Daryl. We don't want to attract any attention to him. Indeed we don't, Daryl said. Will Marius notice him? Constantine's eyelids snapped open, and he leaned closer to the screen as if that would actually bring him physically closer to the young man. There was more pain, but he ignored it, digging his fingernails into the chair's arms to anchor himself. The light from the monitors hurt his sensitive eyes, but he didn't care. He continued to stare. The young man wore ripped jeans and a leather jacket over a dark hoodie. Both looked like they'd seen better days. He appeared to be in his early twenties, he was smiling as he spoke to the person on his phone. Constantine guessed from that smile that the young man was fond of whomever he was talking to, though a little exasperated with them as well. How did he get in? How could he get in? Lizzie cried, her hand still moving at lightning speed over the keyboard, checking all of the non-magical and magical security. Even if the spell somehow failed, my system should have alerted us to the presence in the foyer. Could he be another type of supernatural being? Constantine asked. Someone who could overcome the spells and your system. He smells human, but... Colette broke off. It was clear that something about the young man was different. Of course he's different. Managed to break into a sanctuary, and it would happen when Marius is lounging in the bar. Constantine's gaze darted from the young man to the booth where Marius and his blood brothers were drinking to see if any of them had noticed the intruder. Except Marius was not in the booth. His blood brothers were still eagerly drinking the brandy with the human guests, but Marius was not there. Ice settled in Constantine's stomach. Colette and Daryl were sauntering towards the young man, but Marius had beaten them to him. With that familiar dangerous smile. Marius stepped into the young man's path. <laughs>